The role of goalkeeper in football is the most specialised position in the game. The last line of defence, this role can often be the difference between a team's success and failure. One man who knows all about this is Scott Loach. The former Ipswich Town, Watford and England player knows just what it takes to reach the heights of the game and how important it is to be the man on the line. Carlos Alberto, that's dangerous. Giardino. Only left foot was standing. The overall um, role of a goalkeeper is massive. Um, you only have to look at the the price tags that are being thrown around now, and the transfer fees. You know, like Allison and Kepa, and you know the value of Oblak at 100 a million. Um, God knows what Neuer and Edison would be, but uh, it's a vital role of the team now. Obviously, keepers used to be the the ones that weren't good enough to play, so they were stuck in goal. But now, I think a goalkeeper saves you 10 to 15 points a season and whether you're going for a title or trying to fight relegation that's a massive massive tally you have to have the basics nailed down you have to be calm uh, i think it's more of a personality trait as well you know there's no point being hot-headed and diving around and flying around you've got to be that calm presence that you're back for know that you're there and they can rely on you i think the role's definitely changed um reason being you've got to be better with your feet now the game's changed there's a lot more playing out from the back um, you've got to be great with both feet, you've got to be the first attacker. Someone who is also striving for success in the loneliest position in football is Conor O'Keefe. However, his story is different. Instead of following the traditional path to the top, he has taken a very different route. And it all began in Cheshire. My kind of football career started like pretty much every other boy or girl who's interested in football. I enjoyed playing as a kid. I was very fortunate that my younger brother is only probably about 18 months younger than me. We grew up both loving football, both big Man United fans. We used to play out in the garden all the time. He wanted to be a striker. I loved diving in the mud and making saves. So it worked very well that we would both go out in the back garden for hours and he'd just shoot and I'd try my best to save it. And that's really where kind of football started, just enjoying making saves and rolling in the mud. Funnily enough, Tim Howard was one of my heroes when I was a young kid. When he played for United, I used to love Tim Howard. Um, after him, obviously, Edwin van der Sar. Outside of football, I'm a big fan of Conor McGregor. I loved his kind of work ethic and his focus on improvement, um, especially in the early part of his career. That was someone that I took a lot of inspiration and motivation from. I was a big fan of Ika Casillas. He was a big role model for me as someone who wasn't the tallest goalkeeper, only 5'11", but won World Cups, Champions Leagues, La Liga titles, best goalkeeper in the world, all that kind of thing. And for me, growing up as a smaller goalkeeper, who had been constantly told, you're not big enough to be a professional. At the age of 12, I then joined my local professional club, Macclesfield Town, who at the time were in League Two. And I joined their centre of excellence. I was part of the teams in the Macclesfield Centre of Excellence, all the way from under 12s, under 13s, under 14s, under 15s, under 16s. Macclesfield were asking me to leave school at 16, not do my A-levels, which was something which I didn't really want to do. But I was very lucky that the club and the school and my parents, we kind of all managed to come to an agreement where I would join Macclesfield as a scholar um, and then in the afternoons go back to school and do three A-levels. Macclesfield asked for me to stay on as a professional, offered me a contract, and I managed to come out with two A's and a B in my A-levels. But I didn't play any games. I was on the bench a few times. I kind of had some loan moves to lower non-league leagues. Following financial difficulties at the club, Connor was released and he decided to take a different route in his search for football utilising his A-level results to enrol at Loughborough University. It's probably the best sporting university in the UK, possibly in Europe. You would play in matches up to three times a week, both non-league and university league. So I was probably one of very few people that decided to go to university in order to further my footballing career. But as soon as I got to Loughborough, I was first choice in the first team. I was playing lots of games. I was playing much more games than I was at Macclesfield. I ended up playing over 100 games in three seasons there. And then in your third year on the course that I was on, I was studying for an international business degree. In the third year of that degree, you had the option to either go and work full time in industry as a working placement or study abroad. But going abroad, it might give me an opportunity to play a different style of football. I saw that they had a link with a university in Madrid. And as soon as I saw that, it kind of pricked my interest because I'd always been a big fan of Spanish football. After deciding that Madrid would be the next step in his career, Connor, his partner Frankie and his father employed some unusual tactics as he attempted to find a new club. I was very fortunate that Frankie spoke Spanish. 
So I didn't at that point. So we would drive to these clubs. We'd try and deliver letters with all my contact details, a handwritten letter explaining who I was, what I was trying to do, a link to my football highlight video. And we put them in golden envelopes in order to try and get people's attention. I ended up spending the whole of pre-season with Raya Baikano, which was a second tier club. I was trying to stick it out. They had a little bit of a goalkeeping issue where they hadn't signed a first team goalkeeper and it was coming towards the end of the transfer window. Three days before the end of the window, they signed a first team goalkeeper. All the other goalkeepers moved back down and uh, there was no kind of space for myself. Another club, this time in the third tier, a club called uh, CF Fuenlabrada, they got in contact with me full of professionals who'd been at La Liga level, international level. The two goalkeepers that I worked with, Jordi Cadena used to play for Real Madrid with Casillas and Dudek. Paul Freixen, still at Fuenlabrada now, but used to play for Malaga, Espanyol, these type of teams. I eventually joined them as a third choice goalkeeper for full season. It was amazing for me as an English goalkeeper to go in there, to train with them, to train with the goalkeeper coach, Manolo Rubio, and learn a completely different style of goalkeeping. It was brilliant because it ended up developing me in a way that I had the technical ability from what I learned with Fuenlabrada in Spain, but combined with the physical ability that I'd, I'd learned growing up through English football. I was still studying as well in the afternoons, obviously, for my degree. So I'd go back after training and go to my lessons. And it kind of all culminated in the fact that we drew Real Madrid in the Copa del Rey. We kind of were, were in the press room for the draw, all the cameras were there. Ended up seeing that our name was pulled out against Real Madrid. Everyone went crazy. I wasn't, I didn't play in either game, but I was part of the squad. We had them at home. We lost 2 0, unfortunately. We went away to the Bernabeu to play the second leg, drew 2 2 away at the Bernabeu. Gareth Bale played, Kayla Navas played, Zidane was manager. Just having that whole experience of traveling to the Bernabeu and facing Real Madrid as part of a match day squad, standing on that pitch before the game and looking around and seeing the Bernabeu and seeing all these players come out to warm up, and you're thinking, Four months ago, I was writing golden envelopes to try and find a team, and now I'm standing on Real Madrid's pitch. At the end of the year, Connor returned to Loughborough to complete his studies, after which he set about searching for his next step in the footballing world. This time, instead of being a number three and not playing and just looking at from a development point of view, it was about trying to be a number one, trying to show what I could do actually on the pitch and create the career for myself. Eventually, I was offered a chance to go and play in Gibraltar. Um, for those that don't know, Gibraltar's a small foreign territory of the UK on the south of Spain, a very small, almost rock on the end of the Spanish mainland. Uh, only 30,000 people lived there, really. Um, a very small football league with only 12 teams at the time, but I was an off offered an opportunity to go and play for a team called Europa Point in the Gibraltar National League. But the good thing with Gibraltar and the thing that kind of drew me there was the fact that although it was a very small league, they had three European spots. So. If you were to finish first, second, or win the cup in Gibraltar, you qualified for Europe, either Champions League for winning the league or Europa League for second or finishing the um, winning the cup. So it was a great opportunity. Three from 12 were going to get European places. So in my head, it was like, well, go and do as well as you can. You've got the opportunity to potentially play in Europe to progress your career that way. So I ended up playing for Europa Point. We had a little bit of a difficult time. We we struggled as a team, but personally, I had a very good first half of the season, kind of built my reputation, had a lot of good games against the top teams in Gibraltar. As a team, we didn't really manage to get up to the top end of the table, but come the January transfer window, I built up a bit of a reputation from the games that I'd had and was ended up signed by a bigger club in Gibraltar called FC Bruno's Magpies. Joined them for the remainder of the season, and obviously at that point, we were trying to push to be in that top three. And then unfortunately, in the March of uh, February, March of 2020, we had the coronavirus pandemic, which stopped all football and kind of stopped our attempt at, at getting those European places. Um, and ultimately, the Gibraltar National League was suspended and then cancelled. Returned home with my girlfriend. We were living in Spain and the lockdowns were coming into force. The Spanish lockdown happened a couple of weeks before the English one did. So we had to try and get out of Spain with all our stuff as soon as possible. Kind of had a, a rushed flight back home. Managed to get back home before lockdown happened here in the UK. And suddenly you're in a very difficult position because you have no idea what's going to happen with football. My contract with FC Bruno's Magpies was due to finish at the end of that season, which was ultimately in the middle of that lockdown. So I knew my contract was coming to an end. I didn't know when football was going to open back up again. I didn't know whether I'd go back to Gibraltar, whether I'd try and find a team in England. 
it was obviously a very uncertain time for for everyone. But from a footballing perspective, we had no idea when games were going to restart again and whether there'd be opportunities for, for people such as myself who were technically a free agent. While the world stood still in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, Connor was determined to continue progressing despite no football taking place. So lockdown initially was built for myself in terms of trying to create a training programme that I could do from home. So trying to get in as many physical, technical and mental training sessions to make sure that I didn't regress, but ultimately that I was trying to progress as a footballer still. I knew that it was probably the first time in our lives that we'd experienced um, a situation where everybody from David De Gea down to amateur goalkeepers were in the same boat. Everyone had the same resources. Everyone was confined to their house and their garden. And it was about who could adapt to that the best. And it gave people who, such as myself, were maybe not at the level that they wanted to be, a great opportunity to catch up those goalkeepers that were playing higher league football. So that's what I saw it. I saw it as an opportunity to, to try and overtake those people that I wanted to, to play at their level. And I was doing double sessions pretty much every day, technical sessions, physical sessions, mental training sessions, all with the aim of continuing to develop, knowing that a lot of other goalkeepers were probably not doing anything and regressing during that lockdown. I was also during that time trying to find a football club to play for. Um, as my contract was coming to an end at Magpies, I was trying to figure out where I was going to play. And I looked at it and thought there are different countries which have different types of seasons. So our traditional season here in the UK is from August, September through to May. But there are other countries such as Scandinavia, America, uh, Australia, New Zealand, who play from March through to October. So I got in touch with a lot of agents, a lot of clubs, putting my CV out there, putting my video out there, as had become quite normal after the past few years. And eventually I managed to link up with a, a club called Petia, who were in the Swedish fourth tier. They got back in touch with me, said that they were looking for a goalkeeper uh, and was it possible to, to travel out there? So I ended up signing a contract with Petia. Three each after four each. Back up, Pickford stops it! They had 11 games left of their season. The club were incredible. The people were brilliant, very friendly, very welcoming. I felt part of the team straight away. We had a very good team. We had a very, very good season. So as I said, 11 games, I went straight into the first team, played 11 games, kept eight clean sheets. We ended up winning the season. We won the league by about five points, securing promotion up to the third tier in Sweden. I was voted goalkeeper of the year for the for my division, Division 2 Norland, but also all the other divisions. So there were six equivalent leagues at that level. So I was voted goalkeeper of the year for all those leagues, which was an amazing award to receive. But as I said, I was part of a very, very good team that I really enjoyed playing my football with. It was a great experience to play in Sweden for the first time. A beautiful country. The town was amazing. The team were incredible. And we had a very, very good season. The season finished uh, mid-October. I then flew back home just in time for lockdown 2.0 to begin and then um, start that lockdown training all again. However, as it turns out, his time in Scandinavia was not over. There we go. Done. Contract signed. Let's go and do it again shall we? Once the season had finished, I spoke to the club, they spoke to me, they told me that they were interested in bringing me back. And once they'd said that, there was nowhere else that I really wanted to go. I really enjoyed my football there. It was a great club. I felt I belonged. And I felt that with the team that we have, we have a really good opportunity to go and have even more success in 2021. Because of the fact that we won Division 2 last season, we have now been promoted to Division 1 or Etan, and we will be in the Etan Nora, which is the North Division of the Etan League. It's the third tier of Swedish football. There's an Etan North and an Etan South. It'll be a very tough league full of very, very good teams. So, Connor's journey will continue abroad, something that his partner Frankie has become very familiar with. It's really, really enjoyable um, being able to travel and go from different countries um, because it usually gets to the summer and we have no idea where we're going. So it's always a nice, um, a nice surprise. <laughs> and so far, we've been very lucky um, with going to Spain. That I mean, that was amazing when he played in Gibraltar. Um, I think our favourite moment and place has been Sweden, actually. Um, in terms of our favourite moment, obviously winning the league was a massive highlight. Um, I think it's the fact we were so happy there and it just came so naturally for us to be in Sweden. I think as a moment, that was that was my moment, my favourite moment so far. 
um because it was just very special that we developed an attachment so quickly to Petia um because of the people and, and obviously the the town and the country. Now I obviously can't get over to Sweden because of the coronavirus um, at the moment so um, I know that they're not playing any games but obviously I, I keep up with how he's doing via FaceTime. We FaceTime about two three times every day so it's really easy in that respect um, but for example last year when I was in Sweden and they played a really important game away and um, that I couldn't go to watch I was gripped um and just stuck on twitter for updates um but i think this year a lot of the matches will be uh, streamed so i'll be able to watch them actually happening which i'm not sure is going to help my stress levels <laughs> than frantically checking twitter but um we'll see but yeah I, I keep up with the games quite quite easily alongside playing the game connor and his friend johnny are the team behind the documentary series keeping goals on youtube Good morning guys and welcome back to another episode of Keeping Goals. So I got involved in Keeping Goals uh, because Connor and I both went to university, uh, Loughborough University together. Uh, it just so happened that in our first year we lived opposite each other. Connor lived in the room opposite me um, across the hallway. It was uh, one one evening, we were kind of all sat around in the living room, Connor included, and we were all talking about our futures and what opportunities lay ahead for us and what career paths we could make for each other and ourselves. And Connor mentioned that he was really interested in making a YouTube series, which obviously I was super keen on doing myself. Um, it's kind of together that we collaborated our ideas and we decided that it was something that we could really work on together and put my talents in video production into and and his unique storyline. I thought to myself, this might be able to help other goalkeepers of all ages. It's also a great platform for me to try and showcase my own ability. People might see what I can do as a goalkeeper. I might get opportunities from that. That led to us deciding that we were going to create a YouTube series and document Connor's attempt at becoming a professional. I am the video production side of things. I help to convert Connor's ideas and his story into a vlog. So when Connor was in Spain, I obviously, I was unable to help in the video production side of things other than to consult Connor on how to go about filming things in the first place. Obviously, this is something that I did. We used to have phone calls and video calls often to discuss what was happening in Connor's time in Spain and how we could best show that um, on a video. Connor will um, go about filming in the way that we've developed over the five series that we've created together now. We have a, a meeting a couple of times a week uh, where we discuss the topics for the upcoming episode, the storyline and where that's going. And then we, we kind of ideate the vlogs that we can make off that. I think the thing with Keeping Goals is we share each step of the way with the viewer and, and neither of us know whether it's going to end in me playing for United or whether it's going to end in, in something else. But that's something that we get to experience together. It's all authentic. There's nothing contrived or scripted. It's documenting. From the very initial conversation that we had back in the, the living room of that shared university house, our goal has always been to tell a story and be able to show people the true background and bring people along with what is a very unique situation for Connor. It's been with us ever since, from Spain all the way through, Gibraltar, Loughborough, Sweden. It's now a weekly vlog on YouTube. We've got nearly 40,000 subscribers, which is incredible. It's been something that I'm very, very proud of and I'm proud to see the growth it's had. While Connor prepares for another season in the third tier of Swedish football, he still has ambitions of reaching the very top of the game. To travel the world, playing a sport that you love is an amazing gift and something that I'm very, very grateful to be able to do. I'd love to play in the Premier League. I'm a Man United fan. It'd be amazing to play for Man United. But I think the things that I've learned is it's always about making sure that you focused on you focus on the next step and doing it as well as you possibly can and by doing that you create opportunities to move up to the next level i'd love to play international football but at the moment it's about making sure that each day each game i'm improving i'm getting better as a goalkeeper and if i do that i know that i'll reach where i want to go but that improvement and progression is the most important thing 
At the time of recording, Connor is taking part in pre-season ahead of Petir IF's 2021 campaign, continuing his ambition to make it to the Premier League.